a blessed Sunday morning, everyone. Happy Resurrection Day to us all. Yes, today is Resurrection Sunday, and we join the whole Christian world in celebrating and commemorating the day when our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, conquered the power of death. We greet everyone worshiping with us this morning in our 9.30 worship service here at Silliman University Church through this online broadcasting via FB page and YouTube channel. We also greet our sisters and brothers who are tuning in over local radio 95.1, BYSR FM. Today's worship service is purely virtual, which means we do not have any face-to-face -face worship service for the 9.30. So we welcome everyone joining us with this morning in our Resurrection Sunday celebration, an Easter worship with the theme, He Lives. This morning's worship service will present the resurrection story and interweave individual rebirths of people in the present time. There will be testimonies in between, blended with hymns and anthems performed by the Covenant Choir, conducted by Dr. Elizabeth Susan Suarez. The entire concept of this morning's worship service is crafted by Dr. Elizabeth Susan Suarez, the musical director of this morning's worship celebration, in cooperation with the Siliman University Church Worship and Music Committee, with the chairperson, Attorney Pearl Estacion, and co-chair, Elder Yolanda Maxino. With the support and assistance of the COPVA technical team, in collaboration with the Siliman University Church technical team. We also thank Professor Isabel Vista at the Pipe Organ for our music this morning. With me also as our worship leaders and ministers are the pastoral team members, Reverend January Alcarto and Reverend Wella de Rosas. As we worship together this morning, it is our prayer that through this worship service, we are not only celebrating Resurrection Day as part of the church calendar, but most importantly, we are able to proclaim the truth again that Jesus is as much alive today in our lives as he had been in the past. We hope to proclaim and affirm that Jesus is indeed alive in us, actively working and participating in our affairs, especially in the midst of our different adversities at present. So sisters and brothers in Christ, Welcome to Silliman University Church worship service today as we to get together proclaim and declare that Jesus is alive. Thank you very much. Once again, good morning and happy Resurrection Sunday to us all. Let us together pray. Blessed are you, O God, full of faithfulness and steadfast love. How awesome are your deeds! How glorious is your name in all the earth! We celebrate who you are and what you have done for us. You hold our lives in your hands and keep our feet from stumbling. We've come together, led by your Holy Spirit, to sing your praise, to confess our failings, and to receive your forgiveness and love made possible through the sacrifice of your Son, Jesus Christ. To you be all glory, creator, redeemer, sustainer, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Hey! 
story begins when Jesus was arrested, tried, and found guilty of claiming to be a king. His body was hung on a cross between two thieves. After his death, Jesus' body was wrapped in linen cloths and placed in a tomb with a large stone rolled across the opening. Now after the Sabbath, toward the dawn of the first day, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to see the sepulcher. And behold, there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone. The angel said to the woman, Do not be afraid, for I know that you seek Jesus who was crucified. He is not here, for he has risen.
risen. All hail the power of Jesus' name. lives. Some he met were filled with questions. They were people, like you and me, searching for real meaning in life. But as many received him, to them he gave power to become sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. I am Nicodemus. I thought I knew all the answers to the religious questions of my day. But Jesus told me I didn't understand. He said, I must be born again to enter God's kingdom. Born again? What does it mean?
the Savior sighs you by compassion. And you know that Jesus holds the peace you seek. You can come to Him or turn and walk away. But it starts with just a simple step of faith. For your life can be changed in a moment of truth. This day, today, 2022, many Christians, like Nicodemus, ask the same question and finally realize through their experiences that rebirth requires an inner change, a renewal from within. In the 1980s, a popular worship leader, Don Moen, composed the praise song, God is Good. Moan's songs got fire among the evangelical churches and even got adopted by the Catholic Church. So that before long, Don Moan's Give Thanks became staple worship for all churches everywhere. When God is Good, came out a few years later, it too found its way in worship services all over the world. The theme of the song is quite simple. God is good all the time. And all the time, God is good. It speaks of a truism that the expression has assumed a certain universality. It is commonly shouted as a cheer or yell in public gatherings. It is a popular inspirational yell, both by believer and non-believer alike. The use of the expression has become commonplace that its deeper meaning is now largely taken for granted. And the expansion of the holy phrase in the latter stanzas become lost. He put a song of praise in this heart of mine. Through the darkest night, his light will shine. This is where my Easter testimony begins. It's been 34 years since God put a song in my heart. On December 23, 1997, I suffered a severe myocardial infarction or a heart attack. I learned later on that a heart attack of that severity for people of my age should have been fatal. But in this darkest of nights, the light of God did shine. And by His grace, I enjoyed, on the eve 
of Christmas Eve, his Easter gift. On that eve of Christmas Eve, December 23, 1997, at 11.15 p.m., Marietta rushed me to the emergency room for severe chest pains. The ER nurse called my cardiologist at the time, who promptly came to examine me. I was apparently having an impending heart attack. After the standard ECG, the doctor ordered several laboratory tests, including the cardiac marker troponin. I was then admitted to a room at the SUMC. The following morning, I was given a full breakfast. The dietary department had not been alerted that I was at risk for a heart attack. Unfortunately, my lab results came in after midnight with a clear warning signs, but no one had read the results earlier so that preventive measures could have been taken. Consequently, I ate my full breakfast, my digestive process caused severe stress on my heart and triggered the attack. I was in severe pain and unable to breathe. The sensation was that of a giant boulder pressing against my chest. Marietta rushed to look for help along the medical ward. Thankfully, she came across Dr. Marco Darby, who was monitoring the hemodialysis of the late Bonifacio Irad. Dr. Darby went to my room and with a quick assessment, personally wheeled my bed to the ICU on the same wing. At the ICU, the experienced nurses took over and stabilized my condition. Without Dr. O'Darby's quick thinking and decisive action, I would not be making this testimony this morning. I truly owe my life to God who intervened and sent Dr. O'Darby. During that Christmas break, my cousin-in-law, Dr. Erlin Cabanag de Mary, a cardiologist at St. Luke's Medical Center who was on vacation, paid me a visit. <clears throat> After examining me, examining me, she arranged for me to be transferred to St. Luke's. The 2D echocardiogram indicated that I may need a heart bypass. In early January of 1998, I was flown to Manila and brought to St. Luke's. The bypass team was all prepped and ready to go. The cardiac interventionist was also ready with the angiogram at the Cardiac Catheterization Laboratory, or the cath lab. As I underwent examination under the angiogram to mount out the blocked vessels, a preliminary procedure for heart bypass, the angiogram indicated that there was only one blocked artery. What a miracle! A quick shift in procedure was changed, arranged. The bypass team exited the cath lab and the angioplasty team took over and they prepped me for the modified procedure. In angioplasty, a procedure is used to open blocked coronary arteries caused by coronary artery disease. It restores blood flow to the heart muscle without open heart surgery. In my first angioplasty, three stents were used. After the procedure, blood flow through my blocked artery was normalized. As I reflect on the miracle that I was privileged to receive, I knew that the ravages of my heart were self-inflicted. For lack of discipline in my eating and non-exercise habits, I paid the price 
with a sickly heart. And because of my heart disease is diagnosed as atherosclerosis, a hardening of the artery, I must regularly have an angioplasty every 10 or so years. Along the way, my cardiac problem was compounded with chronic kidney disease, which eventually becomes a partner disease of heart illness. Now, I live with regular heart monitoring and thrice weekly dialysis. An interval of 10 years or so, I would undergo another angioplasty. I have had three since the first in January 1998. And it has kept my heart functioning as normally as may be expected. In the meantime, I started dialysis treatments in 2017 and have a fairly functioning and he healthy lifestyle, save for the imposed quarantine restrictions, whether in a pandemic or otherwise. While my original stents in 1998 are still good, the atherosclerosis continued to progress downwards requiring additional stents in my next two angioplasties. Today, I am a bionic man with eight stents in my artery. More conscious of my mortality and the keen awareness of walking through the valley of the shadow of death, I have resolved to live each day and be thankful with a grateful heart. Most of all, I am grateful to God for my Easter experience as I walk each day in the valley of the shadow of death, now fearing no evil, knowing that my true resurrection is at hand. was back then, Jesus called 12 men to follow him. He asked for their lives, their love, and their hands. There was much work to be done. Together, they fed the hungry, clothed the naked, visited the jailed, and encouraged the poor. The 12 followers left businesses and families and gave their one Lord undivided devotion. They put their lives into the master's hand and embraced a hurting world with a message of hope.
a first-year student of Bachelor of Science in Social Work at Suleiman University. I came from Tumuhon Dinagat Islands, which was greatly hit by Typhoon Nimo. The typhoon was expected to landfall in our area on December 16, as predicted by the weather forecast, and everyone has been evacuated to the nearest evacuation center and school. We didn't plan on going because we knew that we'd be safer in a pastoral house, that we'd be stay during in a typhoon in Landa. I remember when the clock struck noon, gale force wind 
and a torrential rain began to fall. I was already at the pastoral house that time, sleeping in my bed. I was startled awake at 1 p.m. when my brother yelled, Hala ate! Dali! Kusog ng uwan! And I quickly woke up. I saw the strong wind crashing into the neighboring houses, gradually ripping off the roof, some of them flying towards the pastoral house. Trees fell down, electric posts were bent like sticks, the plants are uprooted. The sound of the wind crashing almost everything around is just so overwhelming and terrifying. I could not describe my feelings seeing these things happening. It broke my heart. I saw a place in a corner and there I cried and prayed hard. I could not believe such typhoon can cause devastation and destruction in our vicinity. I began to wonder then how things would work out again. How would we get back on our own feet with the devastation around? Praise be to God that despite of what happened, I and my family were safe and alive. None of us were hurt physically. The pastoral house and the church and everything inside were fine by God's grace. On Sunday, after the devastation of Typhoon Odette in our place, we encourage our fellow youth to come to worship, praising God for His wonderful things happening in our lives. My father, who is the pastor of our church, told us a story during his homily about the life of an old wealthy man in America during his 60th birthday. Allow me to share with you as well, and I hope that you can relate to this beautiful story also. Mr. Sam said, I have lived long enough. I have a happy family. My children are all successful. I own many mansions and buildings. I have plenty of money in bank, but despite the my success and wealth, there is one thing I do not have. There is one thing that I long to see. I long to see what peace looks like. And hopefully before my life comes to an end, I will get to see what peace really means and hope for the future life. Mr. Sam said, let us have a contest. Any person who can bring us a painting or drawing that can fully describe the whole image of peace will receive the amount of 20 million. Many entries are submitted to his office, but none of them pass the test. None of them satisfied the longing of Mr. Sam. Afterwards, he went home with his butler, riding his beautiful jet. While on flight, there was a sudden burst of rain, wind, and lightning. This frightened Mr. Sam. He thought that it was the end of his life, but his companion was soundly sleeping while clutching his crucifix necklace. A few minutes, the weather calmed down, and they were able to land safely. After arriving, Mr. Sam says to his butler, Butler, I searched everywhere. I even asked painters, photographers, and artists, and anyone all over the world to show me what peace looks like. I am even willing to pay million just to see what peace truly means before I die. But none of them are able to satisfy me. Until last night, I saw you sleeping in the middle of a storm, holding a little cross hanging on your neck. 
I saw what peace looks like and thought what peace means. Mr. Sam said, before I gave you the 20 million, can you please tell me why are you not afraid that our jet would crash? The butler said, when I was a child, my son's school teacher taught me this song. And whenever I go, I hold this promise. With Christ in my vessel, I can smile at the storm. Smile at the storm. Smile at the storm. With Christ in my vessel, I can smile at the storm. Until he guides me home. Mr. Sam replied, Now, I know what's missing in my life, Butler. Now, I understand why I don't have peace in me. It is because I do not have Jesus Christ in me. On that day when Typhoon Odet struck us until now, I can feel Jesus Christ in me. Jesus is our only source of peace, and He calls us also to be a channel of peace to others. This leads me to realize that despite that circumstances, I and my family are safe and alive. Our faith in God keeps us safe, which gives us hope even in the midst of a storm. Hope that strengthens and inspires us that even in the midst of devastation and chaos, we can still get up because we have a God. Won't we put our total trust? Amen. We are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10. Good day. I am Franz Julian Sevilla, a first-year BS Information Technology student, president of the Renaissance Youth Leaders Forum. RYLF has always been putting the community first, especially in trying times. The pandemic really took a toll on our lives, but I was lucky enough to have been privileged to live a peaceful and harmonious life. Fast forward to 2021, when all seemed to come closely back to normal, a not so new to us calamity hit our province. Typhoon Odette was a massively destructive typhoon that severely damaged most of the cities and municipalities in our province. It took many lives, injured a lot of people, and took away their homes. Indeed, no one expected for this to happen, and once again, I was lucky enough to be well, safe, and alive. But me being well, safe, and alive doesn't sit well with me because during the onslaught of the typhoon, I can only imagine what the people in hard-hit areas are going through. And so this immediately turned into a plan of action to help those in need as much as we can. Earlier that month, before the typhoon hit, me and my organization have been planning our annual 12 days of Christmas where we go around the city and distribute food packs to the homeless, donate to certain beneficiaries, and go to neighboring towns to give donations and food packs as well, all in the span of 12 days. Our very first day of the 12 days of Christmas was the day before the typhoon severely hit us where we donated to the Talai Rehabilitation Center. Day after that, disaster hit us and damaged all communication lines, damaged neighboring municipalities and cities, and damaged lives. On that day, we were scheduled to give around food packs to homeless people in the city, which we continued to do, but on that day, we already had planned for our relief operation to conduct in the northern part of the province because we knew we had to do something. Cheryl Amor, owner of Miana Jewelries, had contacted me saying that they are more than willing to do a promo for a cause and help in the repacking and the distribution for our relief operation. Simultaneously, RYLF together with the Suleiman University Medical Students Association and Ang Sandigan also initiated another, another donation drive called Bango Negros, also for the victims in the north. And it didn't stop there. Luis Reyes, a former Silimanian and a member of RYLF, also initiated a donation drive called Bango Negros Anon, in which I was also helping with. Having all these three relief operations at the same time never exhausted me because I was fully committed to helping these people get their lives back on track. Now on to my first day of the relief operation as we near the site, 
my heart starts beating fast and seeing the children and people on the street begging for food and money and houses ripped apart, trees uprooted and nothing left behind, it truly devastated me. People there, especially the less fortunate, are in survival mode, doing everything they can to have food, water, and clothing. But as we step out and start doing our distribution, despite the struggle and the intense crowd we encountered, it only warms my heart that I was able to give back to those who need it. The smile on their faces, no matter how small our Ayuda was, puts an enormous amount of joy in my heart. As what Jesus said in the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 20, verse 35, it is more blessed to give than to receive. As I talked with the locals asking how they are and what they need, I would always simply say, Ginagmay lang ni sir or ma'am, pero baso makatabang ni bawi sa nawala sa inyo. I would often get back a sir or dong pagadakong salamat to sa inyo ha. Gabay ratuod ni para ninyo pero dagko ni gawin ni siya para sa mo ha. And this only pushes me to do more. With all the resources, the connections, and volunteers, we can't not do more. Volunteering is not something that's so hard to do. As a youth leader, the spirit of volunteerism is what keeps me going. And I'm pretty sure that if I can do it, you can do it as well. In doing this, remember to put yourself in the shoes of those who are struggling. There you can find your light and doing what's best for them and it inspires you to do more. The pandemic already taught us that we should all work together, that we should go hand in hand in getting back what we've lost. And this is only the time, and it is only time rather, that we extend our helping hand to those that really need it. That is all for me. Thank you so much once again, and may the power of the Via Veritas Vita be with you always. Simon, and found them fishing the shores of a lake. Come, Andrew, come, Simon, Jesus called. And they followed him and found a new calling. He looked for Zacchaeus and found him perched high in the limbs of a tree. Come, Zacchaeus, Jesus called. And Zacchaeus climbed down and found a new heart. He looked for a woman by a Samaritan well and found one shunned without hope. Come, dear one, Jesus called. And she drank from his cup of living water and found a new life. <laughs> i 
such love and confidence in me. My doubts and fears all disappeared. The Son of God was asking me to follow. I gladly offered Him my life as a living sacrifice in service. He looked for me, He saw me where I was, He came to me with open arms of love, and then I knew His love was true. God's only son was calling out my name. He looked for me. He saw me where I was. He came to me with open arms of love. And then I knew his love was true. My life forever changed. The day the Savior looked for me. All my past, the things I've done, He forgave them everyone and cleansed me. Restoring joy which had been gone, He put within my heart a song and healed me. I gladly offer everything, withholding nothing from my King to give Him. Everything within my life I offer as a sacrifice to serve Him. He looked for me, He saw me where I was, He came to me. Son was calling out my name. He looked for me. He saw me where I was. He came to me with open arms of love. And then I knew his love.
today will listen to a testimony of new life. Good day. First of all, I would like to thank the Church Council and the pastoral team led by Pastor Lenny Hovita for giving me this opportunity to share my testimony about my COVID-19 experience. Last November 4, uh, 2021, Inan, myself, and our three-year-old daughter, Leah, were tested positive with COVID. Fortunately, our eldest daughter, Ella, had a negative result. So we were taken to Woodward Hall to begin our supposedly 14-day isolation since our two children were not yet fully vaccinated. However, in the next few days, my coughing was progressing. I had shortness of breath and my blood oxygen level was becoming low. So I decided to have myself admitted at the medical center on November 7 for proper monitoring and health care. You see, the idea of being confined at the hospital was just apprehensible, especially living in in and Ellen, Leah at the dorm all by themselves. Another was my worsening condition at that time. You see, I lost my tatay to COVID in September. Then thereafter, my nanay was diagnosed with COVID-19 with severe pneumonia. I was entertaining the idea was, you know, that I might not make it too. This was aggravated by my experience while I was placed momentarily at the emergency room for respiratory concerns. Some patients there were admitted due to COVID. And there were two instances that emergency procedures like CPR were done to two patients. One was a case of vehicular accident. And the other showed symptoms of chest pain and shortness of breath, possibly due to high blood pressure. But the doctor did not rule out that it may be a case of complication with COVID. So being in that situation made me extremely anxious and greatly discouraged. The undesirable atmosphere at the emergency room was tremendously upsetting. But then I was reminded of my favorite verse of all time, Joshua 1.9, which is, Have I not commanded you, be strong and of good courage. Do not be afraid, nor be dismayed, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Part of being strong and of good courage means trusting in the Lord as our true source of strength. In Joshua's case, he didn't have the answers to the challenges before him, but he was instructed to go forward anyway, acting in faith. My physical strength at that time was failing, but God reminded me to trust Him as the source of true strength and not allowing the negativity of my surrounding to discourage me. For God promised to be with me in the difficulty that I was facing that very moment. So I decided to act in faith. I started to pray while in my bed in the emergency room and while being confined for 10 days due to COVID-19 with pneumonia in the isolation room declaring life healing in the name of Christ for me for my family and you know in in prayer when I was brought to SUMC for you know, by, an, by an ambulance uh, she said in her prayer, Lord, ipahiluna ra ang tanan. True enough, soon after this, on November 11, gladfully the antigen test results of in in and the two girls were non-reactive. So they were allowed to go home the next day. 
and um, I was dischar discharged from the hospital on November 16 and transferred to Davao Cottage. Later that evening, the barangay contact tracer called me to inform that I'm scheduled for my second swab test the next day morning. And in the afternoon of November 17, he called me again to inform me that my antigen result was negative. Salamat sa ginoo. For me, that was the best negative news ever. So, on behalf of my family, um, I would like to take this opportunity to express my deepest gratitude to Siliman University, to Siliman University Church, and to all those who have supported us and prayed for and with us, with you know, while we were facing our ordeal, we are forever grateful to God for your lives and your acts of generosity. May God continually bless you immeasurably, more than all you ask and imagine. Again, daghan kayong salamat. Indeed, like Joshua, we seldom have all the answers to our challenges. But God promises that when we turn to Him and call upon His name, He will hear us and answer us. The God who is all-powerful and all-knowing will never leave us nor forsake us. God has the answers and the strength we need to face any challenge before us. God was with Joshua. God was with me, with my family, and God will be with you wherever you go. Amen. of old had foretold the event. Jesus would ride a donkey into Jerusalem and the crowds would proclaim him a king. Praise to the son of David, they shouted and spread their coats on the road before Jesus. God bless the one who comes in the name of the Lord, they cried with newfound hope and cut branches from trees to place at his feet. And when a passerby would stop and ask, Who is this man? They announced loudly for all to hear, This man is Jesus, the Messiah. Our Deliverer has come. He will give us songs of deliverance. He will give 
surrounded him and called him King. Hosannas rang out and they praised his name. But within a week, the same cheering crowds would raise angry fists and mock his name. One disciple would betray him. The others would run away. Suddenly, Jesus would find himself all alone standing before the high priest, spit upon, beaten, condemned to death, death on the cross. The creator would be crucified by his own creation. The rooster crowed, and suddenly Peter remembered Jesus' words to him. Before the rooster crows, Peter, you will say three times that you do not know me. The pain of his denial was too much to bear. Jesus tell the story about a wayward son who had finally found the courage to go home and he fell before his father saying after all I've done I'm unworthy to be called your own Savior 
Even the obstacle of death has been removed between us and God. If death no longer stands in our way, we can be sure that our sins does not either. Let us confess our sins, that they may be washed away by the mercy of our risen Lord. Let us now say our prayer of confession. Out of the depths we cry to you, Lord. Lord, hear our voice. Let your ears be attentive to our cries for mercy. Living in frailty and weakness, with adversity in our path, we too often buckle in despair. We doubt your goodness. We seek crutches of our own design, aimed at comfort and relief, but which do nothing to heal or restore. In our pain, we deny the greater story that has been told and is being told by the resurrection of our Lord. Though our bodies waste away, we will leave power of the Spirit at work within us. Forgive us for our faltering faith in this momentary and fleeting troubles and forgetting the greater story of your resurrected life. Amen. Sisters and brothers, the power of resurrection is at work in us and with us. Through the former things of our lives in the new heaven and earth, 
that God is yet creating. The Spirit of Christ leads us onto a path of victory over sorrow and death, disbelief and fear. Receive God's grace in the secret place in your heart where there are no words, for the forgiveness of God is too marvelous for words. Amen. I cast all my cares upon you. I lay all of my burdens down at your feet. And any time that I don't know what to do, I will cast all my cares was brought before Pilate, tried, beaten, and condemned to death. They placed on his head a crown of sharp thorns, and around his shoulders a king's robe to mock him. Here is a man, Pilate shouted to the Jews. The crowds roared, kill him, kill him, and they nailed their long-awaited Messiah to a cross at a place called Golgotha, the place of the skull. It was now about the sixth hour, and there was darkness over the whole land until the ninth hour, while the sun's light failed, and the curtain of the temple was torn in two. Then Jesus, crying with a loud voice, said, Father, into thy hands I commit my spirit. And having said this, he breathed his last. On the morning of the third day, Mary Magdalene and another woman named Mary walked to the tomb where Jesus lay. But the stone that sealed his grave had been rolled away. The body was gone. An angel of the Lord told them that Christ was no longer dead. He had risen from the grave. Jesus is alive!
the stone was rolled away. Let the message ring. The grave has lost its power, and the power of sin gave way. All fears that bound our hearts belong to yesterday. Hallelujah! Jesus is alive. He is alive.
Let us bow down our heads in prayer. Let us pray. Yes, O Lord, we sing hallelujah, and your kingdom reigns forever and ever. On this resurrection day, we proclaim your reign in our lives, for you live and continue living within us. We celebrate your resurrection, O God, for it is life-changing, life-giving, and life-sustaining. We welcome the hope you bring to this world full of brokenness. We declare the joy your resurrection brings to our darkness. We rejoice with the empty tomb, for it means you are on the loose and cannot be imprisoned in a tomb. Your truth cannot be suppressed by any authority here on earth. Your love cannot be hidden, for it is the thing that has brought life and hope to all your children. We thank you and praise you, O God, for the assurance of hope, new life, and renewal within each of us that your resurrection brings us all. We are indeed assured that even in the adversities that we are currently facing, you always give hope, liberation, and freedom to whatever has enslaved us. Your resurrection has given life to those who feel lifeless, those who are just going through the emotions. It has given hope to those who are mired in despair, those who feel hopeless and who have given up all hope. Your resurrection has given joy to those who feel no joy, lost their joy or have had their joy snuffed out. We celebrate your life, O God, and we declare that because you live, we too live and alive in this world. Enable us, dear Lord, to continue declaring and proclaiming your resurrected lives through the kind of life that we live. Lord, may the power of your resurrection be felt among those who rely only on the power of arms, weapons, and might to force change. May your resurrection render the end of wars, violence and conflicts, and economic and political inequality in various parts of the world and usher in the beginning of a new era of peace, justice, and freedom for all peoples of the world. O oh God, may your resurrection usher in the coming of a truly new world which your rising from the dead had made possible. Of this we pray only in the name of our risen Lord, Jesus the Christ. Sisters and brothers in Christ, as Christ burst forth from the tomb, may new life burst forth from us and show itself in acts of love and healing to a hurting world. May the loving power of God, which raised Jesus to new life, strengthen us in hope, enrich us with his love, and fill us with the joy in faith. And may the same Christ who lives forever and is the source of our new life keep our hearts rejoicing and grant us peace now and always. Amen.